right, you guys, so I don't even know how to intro this, but if you're new around here, my name is Katie Marie. If you're not new around here, hello and welcome. Today's a very special video because I have a very special thing to announce to you guys, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say it because I never know how to say it. We're pregnant. We're pregnant again with baby number four, and Lord willing, if everything goes well with this pregnancy, we will be adding a fourth little child into our home in August of 2022. So yeah, I am pregnant again. We're doing this again. And with that said, I have a big update to give you guys because if you're new around here, I tend to get very sick when it comes to my pregnancies. Uh, morning sickness does not stay in the first trimester for me. It tends to, with my first one, carry over into the second, with my third and fourth, go throughout the whole pregnancy. So I have no idea what to expect when it comes to how sick I'm going to be and how much it is going to impact my schedule. So I wanted to sit down and just catch you guys up on what I'm thinking, what kind of ultra schedule I'm thinking of doing for 2022 because I really don't want to disappear appear completely off of YouTube. I really do enjoy YouTube. I feel like I've gotten into a good rhythm here on YouTube and being able to create a lot of fun videos that I enjoy making and you guys enjoy watching. So I really don't want to just drop it like I did with my last pregnancy. My last pregnancy with my third child was the first time I was pregnant with my YouTube channel and I also had a move in it so I'm not gonna be too hard on myself but I left YouTube for like two solid months before I came back because it was in the beginning stages, super nauseous, all that sort of thing. So I really don't want to do that this time but I have no idea what the future is going to hold when it comes Comes to how nauseous I'm gonna be. So I figure we sit down, I'm gonna do my makeup and I can catch you guys up on what I'm thinking, how I'm feeling right now, how things are going and all that sort of thing. And with that said, I'm gonna be using on my eyes the DD Signature, the Pumpkin Spice Quad. I do believe this was limited edition and might already be sold out, but if it's not, or if you got this and you were curious to hear my thoughts on it or you just wanted to see what I would do with it, I used it today in this look and we're going to do it on cameras. It's gonna be a casual get ready with me type of video where I use this palette as I talk to you guys about the newest pregnancy. So yeah, that is what we're gonna be doing in this video today. Um, like I said, pregnant with number four, due August 2022, which is super exciting because August is my birthday month. And yeah, I'm just very, very excited, very nervous about going through another bout of morning sickness and just being pregnant. I'm not someone who tends to enjoy being pregnant. So it's a bit of a chore for me when it comes to having a child, but I am excited to welcome another little one into our family. And yeah, I'm just super excited and praying that everything goes smoothly with this one. But I think that's everything I wanted to say in the intro. We can just go ahead and dive right into it. I chat your ear off during the whole tutorial doing this makeup, so I'm not gonna keep you guys here too long. Let's go ahead and get right into it and just share with you guys a little bit of a life update, kind of what to expect on my channel in 2022. And yeah, let's just get to it. Okay, so as I showed, this is the DD Signatures, the Pumpkin Spice Pot. I believe it's limited edition. I don't know if it's still available, but it, I was sent it from the brand, so I really do want to use it. I'm not going to be focusing this video too much on it, but just right up to tell you guys, I plan to use this in my crease, this on the outer corner, and this all over the lid, and this as an inner corner highlight. We'll see how it goes, but if I forget to say anything as I'm talking and whatnot, that's what I'm doing. But yeah, so we're doing it again. I am pregnant and... We're gonna have a baby mid-August-ish sometime in 2022, and um, I'm about, I can't remember if I told you in the beginning, but I'm about five, almost six weeks at this point, and I'm already starting to feel pretty bad. Like this whole, I would say it started just at the cusp of the five week mark when I was getting up in the morning, I was going like, mm -hmm, I really don't feel good before I get some food in my stomach. And But once I could get some food in, it was like, okay, it's bearable, but week five, I just constantly feel like I'm just like this close to losing everything and in the mornings it's hard and whatnot and I'm trying some different things that I did that I haven't done in previous pregnancies and praying it will help but like I said I'm still at like that five six week mark we're just in the beginning stages of morning sickness so I have no idea I have no idea how bad it's gonna get and if my efforts to you know, help myself not get too sick are going to actually pan out and be of a help or if it's just going to be like, you know, try as you might, it's still going to be a rough ride. So with that in mind, I can definitely tell you that my schedule for 2022 is going to be impacted, especially here at the beginning because of just the, the different, um, my schedule is going to change so much because you guys know typically the last year I've done the schedule where I wake up before the kids and I do my makeup, see my husband off, and then that way at nap time, in the middle of the day, I can either record or edit or both, and I always stayed up late. 
But one big thing for me when I am pregnant is that I have to sleep a lot. And if I don't sleep a lot, the nausea is like so much more intensified. I can always tell if I didn't sleep well by how nauseous I am the next day. So with that in mind, especially in the beginning when the nausea is gonna be the most intense, I'm trying to get as much sleep as I can, which really cuts into not only my editing time at night, but also I've started like not setting an alarm in the morning so that I am able to sleep longer and I am sleeping longer, so I'm not waking up as early like today to get ready. I just threw on my foundation when the kids were up after we had started the day, but I'm not getting up in the morning to do my makeup. So it's really going to, as I said, not only cut into the recording time that I can do during naps, but just like YouTube in general, because now since I'm going to bed a lot earlier and I am waking up a lot later, the only time I can work on YouTube is during naps. And then with naps, like if some days get bad enough, I feel tired enough or sick enough, I will try to sleep instead of work on anything. So all that is gonna affect how much I can do YouTube. I think before this, before, you know, uh, Kate Miss and all that, I was doing YouTube, I think a solid three videos every week, every now and then I would sneak in a fourth. But that is going to change because uh, I just, I just can't um, not only edit, but I don't think I'll be able to record that much. I am gonna try this week. So the week I'm recording this is not even the new year yet, but I'm gonna try to get some videos pre-filmed as much as I can while I'm not feeling too bad. Cause like I said, I don't know how bad I'm going to start feeling as I get kind of further into my first trimester. Typically for me in previous pregnancy, I feel like the worst was like eight, nine month or weeks month. Eight, nine weeks is when the nausea is just really intense. And that's kind of, I'm planning to be my gauge to see how bad it's gonna be. So with me being only at six weeks, I'm kind of trying to prepare myself for it to get worse before it gets better, hopefully. So with that in mind, I'm trying to this week and maybe next if I'm still feeling okay to pre-plan some stuff and pre-record some stuff. I am giving myself, you know, the week off. It's already past at this time. This is me coming back to YouTube, but I took a week off, which definitely helps and allowed myself to do some just recording and not really worrying about editing and uploading to YouTube in the hopes that I can get some stuff pre filmed because I had more than a few videos that I had wished I could do during Kate Miss that I just couldn't because of the every other week or every other day schedule that I was doing. I just didn't have time. So I'd like to do some of those end of the year. I, I want to talk about like brushes that I had discovered in 2021. I wanted to go through and do a fun palette bingo with my top 10 from 2020 like I did the previous year with 2019. I plan to do that if I can. And what else was I wanna do? I was wanting to also do like a battle of the first half of 2021 palettes against the last half of 2021 palettes because I did that the previous year and that was also a lot of fun. So there's just a lot of video ideas that I didn't get to do in December and I'm going to try my best to pre-record them so I can put them up in January and my goal right now is if I am well enough to do this to try to post twice a week and I still don't know the days but I'll probably be like Monday and Thursday or Tuesday and Thursday I don't know for me my channel I feel like Friday is a pretty bad day to upload just personally and views and whatnot I've noticed um, and then I think Saturdays are okay but also not maybe the best so I don't know I was thinking either Tuesday and Saturday or um, Tuesday or Monday and Thursday. Those are the two I'm playing around with. And again, that's going to be very like up in the air. It might just be, especially in the beginning when I think it's you know going to be the hardest around those between like eight and the first trimester. Personally for me, if you're new here to my channel, I tend to be nauseous and just a lot of morning sickness throughout the entire pregnancy. For Levi, I was that way. For Gideon, I was that way. For Olivia, I wasn't as bad. She was also my first, so I got to sleep as much as I wanted to. I don't think I was as bad with Olivia, but I do remember if I ever overdid it, even with her, I could have a bit of nausea and whatnot that I dealt with, or if I was sick and not eating, I would still have the nausea to deal with. So anyway, I don't know how long my, my uh, morning sickness is gonna last, but if it's really bad, I will try to do like once a week. Like I really don't want to totally disappear. If you were around when I got pregnant with Levi, which was the only pregnancy I've had while doing YouTube, um, we also moved from Virginia to Florida at the same time. And I took a break from YouTube right at the, you know, right when we went to move. And then I found out a couple, I think two weeks before we moved that I was pregnant. So by the time we settled, nausea started. I think I was gone from YouTube for two months, which I really don't want to do. But part of that was just because, you know, I moved ahead of my husband. So it was just me and the kids. We had a house to set up. We had like, if you've ever moved, there's just so much to do when you move somewhere. We had the house in Virginia to get, you know, to sell and move everything down, just transfer things. And then I was sick and my husband wasn't here. So it was just a lot. And that was a big reason why I just kind of 
took a big step back off of YouTube and I remember when it was like getting close to the two month mark I was like should I even come back to YouTube I was just feeling kind of so bad and blah and I'd been gone so long but I'm glad I went back I can definitely tell you I forget if I ever mentioned that before that I almost didn't come back to YouTube but I'm glad I came back and I really enjoy YouTube and like I said I really don't want to do that this time where I just ghost y'all for like two months so I'm really trying to set myself up and kind of gear myself up to like get some pre-recorded content in before I get too sick and that way even if I am sick I have a bunch of pre-recorded content that I can lay on the couch feel miserable and edit and I mean for me personally it's a good distraction like when I was pregnant with Levi and feeling super sick during nap tabs I remembered I would just like lay on the couch and watch YouTube and that was when the I think lipstick gate was going on so I was watching all those and you know it's a good distraction to do something else with my mind instead of just lay there and think about how bad I feel so that's why I want to record as much as I can this week even though I'm already starting to feel really bad I'm hoping I can get a, a little handful of videos pre-filmed so that I could maybe edit them if I don't feel like recording. And then going forward past that, once I get those videos pre-recorded and if I still am feeling bad, I think I might just try to do more videos like this where maybe I'm talking about something or reviewing something, but I'm doing it while putting my makeup on because like I said, I'm not gonna be waking up early anymore. So I won't be kind of have my makeup on and ready by the time nap time comes around really. So um, I think it might just be a good and relaxing and doable for me to maybe once or twice a week sit down and like put my makeup on camera, talk to you guys about whatever the you know video is about, and then I can edit those a more get ready with me style, and those are also easier for me to edit, so it's a little bit easier and doable for me to get out even if I'm feeling pretty bad. So that's kind of my plan. So if in the next, you know, the first half of this year, you see a lot of get ready with me style videos of me just putting on my makeup, that's gonna be why, because that might be all I can do. I just don't know how doable it'll be for me to like get my makeup on and done before nap time so that I can record more of a, a formal video. Like my Palapaloozas. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a Palapalooza for a little while just because of, you know, those usually take me an hour to film and then I have to have my makeup kind of on and ready before I sit down and film. So I only get about an hour and a half with my kids now for nap time just because my oldest is getting older so she doesn't go down as soon. And then um, by the time she goes down, my youngest will wake up, or my second oldest, he usually is the first one to wake up because he's been sleeping longer. And my kids just generally don't nap all that long, so that tends to be how it goes. I feel super hot and super shiny. Yeah, I'm very shiny right now. I need some powder. I'll just do a little powder to try to cut down on some of that shine while I let that dry. So anyway, you're definitely gonna see a big change in my schedule, a big slowdown for me in what I upload. But I'm gonna try to not totally disappear, not totally, um, you know, stop op uploading. And I do hope to be back to somewhat of a consistent, maybe not three videos every week, but somewhat consistently. Um, I don't know if I'll be resuming my Will I Buy It's either, just because those are another video. They're really relaxing and I enjoy them, but again, it's a video where I tend to have my makeup on and then sit down and talk to the camera. So I don't know how doable that'll be, especially in the beginning, but maybe towards the, you know, second trimester, end of second trimester, if I'm feeling better, I can get back to doing them because I really do enjoy them. I was also thinking to maybe do more live streams. I don't know if I can get internet back here because with our previous provider, I couldn't even get internet like enough to do a live stream, like right where our modem was or right where the router was. It was such bad internet, but about a month or so ago, we actually switched providers and it's been better. So I'm like, maybe I could do a live stream. And that would be another way if like, I'm not feeling good on a week and I don't have anything filmed or I just don't have any energy to edit. And then, you know, one day I'm not feeling too bad. I'm like, hey, maybe I'll do a live stream. I feel like that's very uncommon for me. I tend to not, I think I've only done one live stream in the past and that was when I was pregnant with Levi, but that might be something fun to do. And if I could get good internet back here, I could even do a live stream like while doing my makeup, that would be fun. Let me know what you think about that. If you guys uh, enjoy live streams, it would probably be very last minute of just like, okay, I'm feeling good. I kind of want to do something on YouTube. I don't have anything ready, so let's do a live stream. So I really couldn't give much of a like a heads up, tomorrow I'm gonna go live type of thing but it might be fun. And maybe I can figure out how to do a live stream to my um, 
my camera. I'll have to ask Britt how she does it because it's good quality. I feel like the camera on my computer is not good quality. So anyway, yeah, that's about all the changes that I was wanting to let you guys know. Um, I know I'm sure I'm going to get a plethora of comments of y'all saying like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it if you have to like completely step back or you know just take the whole pregnancy off and I really do appreciate it and I know in the back of my mind that I if I can't do it you know I can't do it I'm not gonna beat myself up or make myself sicker trying to keep to a schedule if I just am not able to so I am gonna try to go easy on myself but I also think it's good to kind of push myself a little bit and as I've been thinking a back to Levi's pregnancy I definitely did the most with Levi, especially even during the beginning with morning sickness. We did a lot, like my my siblings had a couple big things like graduations and events that I went to towards the beginning first trimester. Um, I remember taking my kids to a couple different things and, you know, thinking back, I remember being pretty, feeling pretty sick. But at the same time, like looking back, I have like a bunch of pictures of like my kids having fun going. I remember we went to this one like kids museum type thing. And on the way there, we almost turned around because like I was so sick. I thought I was going to lose it. I was just feeling so nauseous. And I think this was close to or after my first trimester, which is like, huh, oh dear. Who knows what this will, this pregnancy will be like. But anyway, I remember my husband was almost like, hey, you don't feel good. Like we don't have to do this. We're going to turn around. And I was like, no. I want to do this. I want to do it for the kids. I was like, because, you know, they, they had been looking forward to it for so long. I felt so bad canceling it on them because they were really excited to go see this kids museum. And um, I was like, I'm fine. Like, as long as I don't throw up, I'm okay. Like, I can be sick and at least they can have fun because I can either be sick with them and them being able to have fun and, you know, make good memories. Or I can sit on the couch and be sick at home and just, you know, feel miserable while watching the kids kind of thing. So I was like, I'm going to be sick regardless. So let's just go. And, um, I never got like sick sick. I never threw up, but I definitely remember them walking around playing and me just following. And I would sit on any bench that I could kind of thing and take a break and a breather. And I did a lot of slow breathing and a lot of drinking water. But, uh, looking back, like it just, I have good memories my kids have fun memories of going there and I'm glad I went. So I'm glad I kind of pushed myself to still like try to be a little bit like normal with my life even though I was going through morning sickness because as I said looking back I, I think I did the most with Levi's pregnancy even though with his pregnancy I had a lot of nausea all throughout and a lot of other you know just pregnancy related things all throughout his pregnancy. His was definitely I felt like the most exhausting for my body for a lot of reasons a lot of different reasons but I just I felt just so exhausted all the time with him, just so tired of being pregnant with him. But like I said, looking back, I have like so many memories and so many uh, pictures and whatnot of my kids having fun and just, I don't know, making it special for them. So that's why I don't even know where I got on this rabbit trail. But I think I was telling you guys, uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to set myself up to push myself a little bit of like, yeah, I don't feel good, but you know, let me still do something to distract myself. And that's kind of what I'm hoping YouTube can be like, yeah, I don't feel good, but you know, I can sit on the couch and edit. And then that way, when I look back on the pregnancy, I don't just like remember sitting at home <laughs> trying to keep my kids entertained as they play with, you know, the same toys that they played with the last five months as I sit on the couch feeling miserable for myself. And that's all I remember from the pregnancy, if that makes sense. I think I did that a lot with Gideon's pregnancy. You know, his was, uh, you know, the worst when it came to the nausea. And I think I just, it really took me by surprise by how nauseous I was. Because with him, I think it was like two months straight. I would wake up every morning and just like throw up multiple times in that morning just trying to get food down and get food to stay and it was just miserable. So with him I, I stayed home, I stayed close to home for most of it just because I felt so bad and it was also doable because I only had one child so um, and she was you know two so she was very happy kind of just playing at home not doing a whole lot but now that my kids are older I don't know I just want to try to push myself a little bit more to uh not do a ton, but just try to stay a little bit normal. I do have like school that I got to do with my daughter because she's in kindergarten now and we have a like a local homeschool thing we do. So Lord willing, I'm well enough to do all that throughout this and not miss too much at least. So yeah, I'm going to try to stay as normal as I can with the kids and like life. But it'll just be a lot of, you know, the big change for me right now is going to bed really early and sleeping in later. And that's why it's going to, I think, have the most effect on YouTube. Just because that tends to be my YouTube time. Either recording or editing or whatnot. But 
we're super excited. I don't think I've really talked about it. Um, I don't know how far along I'll be at the time of this going up. My daughter is so excited. She's hoping so hard for a little girl. And I really, I pray we also have a girl too, just for her. Because with Levi, she was wanting a, a little girl, a little sister so hard. She was like, I already have a little brother. I need a little sister. And she was pretty bummed when we found out that Levi was going to be a boy. But we'll see. We're praying for a little girl. But either way, we're just really excited and praying that everything goes smoothly. Um, with this coming after a miscarriage, I was de I'm definitely a lot more nervous than I would say that I, I was with my previous pregnancies because um, if you didn't know, I did a video kind of announcing it at the beginning of 2021, but we did have a miscarriage for our fourth so I guess this is technically our fifth pregnancy, but anyway, we did have a miscarriage and it happened not too long after we found out to the point where like some people, we didn't even have the chance to like tell them we were pregnant before I had a miscarriage. I think it was like five and a half or six weeks. Um, so part of me is definitely a lot more aware of like the fragility of this. And my husband was even like, do you want to wait longer before telling people or whatnot? But I decided not to wait. I don't know. I feel like it, it was really hard last time when um, I lost the baby so soon. I'm going to talk about miscarriage. I feel like people like a little, um, what's that called? Trigger warning. But anyway, I felt like it was really harder to have to tell people like I was pregnant and lost it after the fact than to tell people like, hey, I'm pregnant and we celebrate and then have to say like, hey, we miscarried, you know, the baby miscarried, we lost the baby kind of thing. I feel like the, to tell the people that I miscarried was a lot easier than for me now to have conversations with people and like for whatever reason the conversation comes up or I just want to tell them you know whatnot to tell them like yeah we had a pregnancy but I did miscarry it after the fact I don't know I just found it a very awkward conversation so I don't know I just feel like I'd rather celebrate <laughs> while I can and if we you know if we do end up miscarrying or something like that cross that bridge when we come to it but I don't know we've never been the type to to wait and not tell anyone. I don't really understand. I've never understood the whole like, oh, keep it quiet until after the first trimester or whatever. I personally could never do that anyway because even with my first one and definitely with my second one, I was very sick like at the very beginning. And even this one, like I said, I'm five weeks and I'm already like to the point where it's distractingly nauseous. Like I went to my mom's yesterday and I was so nauseous. Like I was there, I was having conversation, but I could, I did, don't have a great poker face. So they were like, you look like you don't feel great. And I was like, it's because I don't. So I could never keep that hidden throughout the first trimester anyway. But anyway, we're just personally been people who enjoy sharing early and that's kind of what we've done. I think with Olivia, when I was pregnant with my first, like we told everyone the day, like my pregnant, that I got the positive on my pregnancy test. Like we were pretty excited. And then um, with uh, my second one, I actually, my mom found out before my husband because I took a pregnancy test and the line was so faint. I was like, am I pregnant? Like, I really don't know. And so I sent it to my mom. I was like, mom, is that, is that a positive that I really can't see? So she knew, she was like, yup, that looks like a positive. So anyway, we've always been the type to tell, tell people pretty early on. So we'll see. I'm praying that everything goes smoothly and the baby's healthy. I will say I am far more uh, unprepared for this pregnancy than I was with the one we miscarried. For the one we miscarried, I remember like as soon as I found it out, I think that week I went and just bought a ton of food and made like 20 or 30 freezer meals and threw them in the freezer because I was like, I'm going to start feeling sick and I want food in the freezer. But with this one, because it was around Christmas, I had so much on my plate. I just tried to get through Christmas and I was like, oh, we'll just get through Christmas. And then after Christmas, which is this week, I'll start like freezing stuff. And now I'm really starting to feel sick and I'm just like, oh. So I, ha I bought a bunch of food that I need to throw into freezer bags and throw it into the freezer, but I just don't feel really well. So I just, I've been doing like one or two a day instead of like I did before and just like doing it all super fast. So I'm definitely not as prepared as last time because I did not get that done super fast. But I definitely feel like last time, um, I think I miscarried the baby, like I said, between five and six weeks. I can't even remember now, but it was, it was only a couple weeks after we found out, you know, at the four week mark that we, uh, we miscarried. But I don't remember really feeling nauseous at all until I, the day I miscarried, it was actually like my most intense nausea. Um, so with this one being so nauseous so early, right at like at the cusp of five weeks. It was even a little bit before that I started feeling bleh. Anyway, I hope that's a good sign that I'm like feeling nauseous and whatnot, that everything's going okay. But I guess time will tell. 
So anyway, let me go ahead and finish this eye because I'm starting to do really badly on this eye. So I'm going to pause, focus, and then um, I guess we're about done. I pretty much done anything. So I'll pause, focus, and then we'll close out with my final thoughts. All right, so here's the finished look. I really like how it turned out. Again, I told you guys in the beginning I wasn't really going to be talking about the palette, but just right here I'll throw up some close-ups so you guys can see. I really am very pleased with this palette. I knew the moment I saw it I was going to love it because I'm familiar with Dee Dee Signature's mattes, and these mattes look fantastic. And then her shimmers, I always know they're going to be something special. And to have two of them in this palette that are nice and different but still beautiful, both can be used on the lid. They both have such a beautiful shift to them. I don't think they're fully multi-chrome, but they're definitely like a duo chrome and especially the lighter one has such like a green gold or pinky shift I don't know it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful and this probably was a very typical look to go for but like I said I was wanting to focus on what I was talking about in the video not so much in the look so hence why I went for a very easy put together look and I mean this quad you can totally get this look so very easy I love a palette that gives you something really light that you can put in the crease something really dark on the outer corner and then something fun for the lid and this quad actually gives it to you again I think it was limited edition so I'm not going to go on too long about it but if you were able to get it I do hope you enjoyed it and I'm very glad to own it I'm very thankful for Dee Dee sending it over and once again she did another incredible job with a very special palette but yeah that is gonna do it that is the look and this is pretty much the video um, I really just want to sit down and not only share the news that I am pregnant but give you guys a little bit of a heads up of what to expect in the coming months again like I said I'm gonna be very easy on myself so if I'm not able to upload for a while I am just gonna go ahead and listen to my body and take a break but I do hope as I said I'm not gonna be gone too long I definitely don't hope I don't leave for two months like I did last time but I'm gonna do my best to stay somewhat consistent on here as much as I am able to let me know if you guys would like to hear like baby updates or just like how I'm feeling I feel like I've never done it before I've asked in the past and I've gotten some interest but you know thinking back over it I definitely regretted not documenting more like so for me personally I'm trying to write more down of how I feel and what I eat so that I can kind of get more clued in on like how I can help myself feel better because I definitely think my nausea and like my morning sickness definitely depending on what I'm eating what I'm doing how I'm sleeping like I said it really affects me so I'm trying to write it down so that in future pregnancies I can know like okay that day like I you know did such and such and such and I felt really bad so the next day I did such and such and such felt really better let's do the stuff on the days that I felt better so that I can feel better so I'm doing that with this pregnancy and I figured I would just ask if you know I'm doing a chatty get ready with me if you'd like to hear any of Updates. Would you guys like to hear the little tips and tricks I'm doing to try not to be as nauseous and I can update you in a couple weeks and let you guys know if they work because like I said I'm trying some different things because I really don't like feeling nauseous. I mean I'm, I'm nauseous but I really don't like throwing up. I don't think anyone does but with Gideon like I said I did it every day for a couple months and that was that was not fun. So it's always my goal with pregnancies to try to be able to be stable enough to function and not feel like I live over a toilet the whole time. So if videos like that kind of talking about what I'm doing, how I'm feeling or whatnot might be helpful. Like I said, maybe I can do it in a sit down video where I use a new palette and talk to you guys on camera. Maybe I can do something like that and just keep you guys in the loop and let you guys know how I'm feeling. But let me know as always down below in the comments what you would like to see. And I think with all that said, that is going to do it for me. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I don't know how often I'll be on my Instagram because again I'm going to be taking a big step back so I don't know if I'll be doing every day over on Instagram but I am going to try to keep it up somewhat so if you want to follow me over on Instagram I'm LadyKatie92 over there and I post reels up close eye pictures all that sort of thing and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video bye